Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Active Trades Monday Market Matters webinar. And we are here today to talk about understanding and using Roro sentiment in your uh, trading. Fascinating subject and uh, very pertinent based upon what we've seen going on over the uh, the last uh, few days or so. So it's, uh, it's been perfectly timed to, to be able to help educate you about uh, what risk on risk off means and actually how you can utilize it in your trading. What should we talk about today? Got lots to cover, lots of interesting things to talk about. Um, as always, welcome to, to Monday Market Matters and we'll explain that for the for the new people joining us. We uh, we live in rather interesting times, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, you know what we'll be talking about in terms of the education element is well, you know, what to be aware of from you know dangerous zones around the world, dangerous events go on for all of us, for everybody here. And I appreciate that um you know, in terms of audience, uh, you know, whilst this is for the English desk at Active Trades, we we truly have a global audience here, and uh, it's great to have you all here. Um, wherever you're joining us from, you are very very welcome. I hope you're uh, having a, a a good year, okay? And uh, you know, we here all Active Trades, we do we do really appreciate you uh, joining us for our sessions, but. We do re also realize that there are, you know, um, uh, several dangerous places around the world, geopolitical events that happen. And also we'll talk about how uncertain times and volatile periods, they affect different asset classes. And most importantly, I think, you know, as, as traders in financial markets, how do we go about turning it from a threat into an opportunity, which I like to think is the uh, is the uh, kind of important element, because all of these events happen they happen to everybody okay that's the you, know, you might say that's life that's most modern living but it is a case of well you know threats occur how, how do we how do we sort of uh, mitigate those threats and how do we actually look to turn it into an opportunity and that's what we're going to focus on a uh, a good deal um so um, simon says uh, hi paul i'm unable to find the video from one of your past webinars which i found helpful I believe it's called debriefing trades could you assist in getting that webinar um, I shall have a little look on the uh, uh, webinar archive on the Active Trades uh, website. Normally, about a week or two after the live event is gone, then invariably we'll see it go on to the uh, to the webinar archive as well. Uh, but I will also I'll uh, make sure that um, that that is there on for you, Simon, because it is a very useful um, session. So uh, thanks for uh, thanks for bringing that to our notice. Um, and so we've got lots to talk about, and as always, we will transition across to having a look at uh, chat about the. Live Live markets as we always want to look at the um, how the American markets open today for the start of the week in what is a rather interesting and uh, um, chunky week ahead in terms of uh, data and uh, news coming out so far. So um, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Paul, traded for uh, many years, Okay, traded for funds, traded for clients, and uh, primarily I like to focus on trading FX and commodities for myself. I tend to be a trend trader for sort of longer term swing and position trading, and I tend to be a mean reversion and a reversal trader for my sort of shorter term intraday and scalping traders, um, all of which have their place when we talk about um, today's main educational element. So um, I appreciate it. it's great to have people here who join us every week, but I, I do recognize that there are some people who are joining us for the first time or just, you know, at the start of their trading journey. And uh, Monday Market Matters is our regular webinar series, um, basically helping traders just start the uh, start the week in the uh, in the right frame as we prepare for the opening of the US markets in about what's that, about 24 minutes. So uh, every Monday, two o'clock London time, we look to cover the news. OK, just to be aware of what the major news is coming out for the week ahead. We'll do the major piece, which will be on education, which is today is all about uh, understanding and using Roro sentiment. As always, we have a little look at the uh, platforms and tools that you have available to you as an active trades clients. And then we finish with a look at the live markets at the start of the US session. So there is always plenty for us to discuss, always plenty for us to go about. If you have questions or comments, then you can always put that in the chat box um, and I will try and answer that as we go along. So, um, as always, we start with a quick look at what is the news coming for the week ahead. 
And, uh, you know, I, I make no apology. I say this every week. Um, if you're a new trader, I don't expect you to be able to analyze the uh, economic data straight away. But I would expect you to know when the economic data is due out. OK, and you can find that data on uh, you know an economic calendar. There is one of them on the Active Trades uh, uh, website. You can find them, and, and there are other ones on the internet. So there's no there's no excuse not to know when at least that major news is coming out. Because when that major news comes out, it is a very good chance that it will induce volatility into the market. And volatility is a double edged sword. Okay, when you're on the right side of it, it's fabulous. When you're on the wrong side of it, it can be challenging. So as a new trader, trader. It doesn't matter whether you've been trading for two weeks or two decades. It's important to know when that major news is uh, is coming out. And as I said, you can refer to that on the economic calendar. Uh, and we have quite a bit of data coming out this week. OK, it's an interesting week. We had you know, a full on week last week in terms of not only the news, but importantly, uh, major earnings announcements from some of the US uh, major US companies, including some of those big US tech stocks. And that continues this week. OK, we've got big names, things like Apple, Amazon, PayPal, etc., and a whole host of others that are reporting their earnings this week. And on top of that, OK, we also have, you know, data coming out and stuff. So we've had um, effectively, you know, today is a relatively quiet day. Tomorrow we get a little bit of uh, data in terms of some of the GDP numbers for, um, for Europe, OK, which people will be interested in. Uh, and then when we get into Wednesday, we've got uh, Japanese consumer confidence and the American ISM and American JOLTS jobs opening. But also, most importantly for the week is uh, what will be Wednesday evening for those of us here in the in Europe would be the American FOMC interest rate decision. Now. Um, the majority of people are no longer expecting any kind of major change at this meeting. And it might be said they're not expecting any major change for for a good number of uh, at least the next two or three meetings. OK, maybe even more based upon the data, you know, as we've uh, been seeing over the last few weeks. However, nonetheless, even though there's no change expected, there will invariably be interest to see what Mr. Powell has got to say uh, and whether there's any particular change in, in the sentiment of his uh, of the press releases. Uh, Thursday, we've got Australian and Canadian um, trade balances. And then Friday, OK, first Friday of the month. So we have uh, American non-farm payrolls number, right, which is always keenly watched. And you've also got the uh, ISM services PMI. That's American versions of, uh, of PMI. So as I said, we've got end of month. Uh, we have got start of month. We have got quite a lot of, uh, as I said, chunky data coming out. And also on top of that, uh, we have some of those major US earnings coming out, all of which will have an impact upon volatility and they will all have an impact upon sentiment. All right. Which um, leads us on very, very nicely to uh, our main element for uh, today's educational piece for our for our session today. So. Um, as the slide says, I think it's probably fair to say that uh, the last three to four years um, has generated a great deal of uncertainty and volatility, um, both in our personal lives, it might be said, uh, and also in financial markets. And so if you are to be successful long term trade and by long term trade, I mean, as in the length of your career rather than the, the outlook of your positions, then you need to be able to navigate your way through such uncertain times and such volatile periods and so today what we're going to do here is we're going to explain a little bit about what you need to be aware of when trading through uncertain times and volatile periods and i'll also sort of just give you my own little take in terms of understanding what's quite often known as roro and give you a little bit of a uh, let's call it like a, a you know an introduction to understanding roro and how you can utilize it in your own trading ideas so and um, plenty to cover and uh, i think this will be useful okay help traders get a, a grasp on uh, you know on actually you know the, the kind of where financial markets are and, and where their likely bias is, is most likely to, to draw towards so as i said you know we've seen plenty of volatility and uncertainty in the last few years and, and you know as, as i said a little bit earlier volatility is a double-edged sword okay you know uh, it, it is both good and bad all right it, it is what it is and so it is your job as a trader 
to find a way to understand it and be able to manage it and to be able to navigate it. And what happens is, you know, certainly when we see certain events occur, we also normally see major moves in financial markets. So if there has been threat of war, okay, between, let's say, you know, warring organizations or countries, then the actual outbreak of war will invariably sort of induce volatility. We have seen in the last four years health pandemics and how, you know, nations and entire globes uh, operate that. We have political upheaval and how that um, impacts markets. We can have things like failure of crop harvests, okay, and uh, and also in an increasingly uh, digital world, we have the impact and effect upon cyber attacks. So it's fair to say there's lots of volatility there. There's lots of those events happen in the last three, four years. Some of them maybe have been understood. Others have come out of nowhere i wouldn't necessarily uh, i wouldn't necessarily kind of name everything as sort of you know um mr talib's black swan but certainly there have been uh, uh, there certainly have been instances of events that perhaps have um, have caught people unawares okay so all of that induces volatility all of that volatility um as i said will induce moves within financial markets uh, and as I said, if you're going to have a long term career as a trader, being able to navigate that, being able to understand it, you know, becomes crucially important. However, I recognize that at the start of your journey, that can be a little bit challenging because you're just learning to grasp so many different topics, so many different elements of trading. And actually, you know, it, what you want is, you know, just a very simple way to be able to, to grasp and um, what is the sentiment within markets? Where is the likely kind of direction? And what, you know, how are markets um, demonstrating their, uh, either their either their happiness or their, or their, their lack of happiness? Uh, and we'll, we'll dig into that more in a few slides. Now, of course, uh, we live in a world with, we have, you know, increasing use of, uh, you know, algorithmic trading within financial markets. And, you know, depending upon the numbers you wish to achieve, depending upon the asset classes, we see numbers between 50 to 80 percent of, you know, of the uh, most trading in most markets is through our algorithmic um, uh, trading methods. However, I would still, OK, I would still suggest that um, even though if they're trading algos, they are still a reflection of human psychology. They have, for the most part, been programmed by humans and they represent those biases. So they represent hope, fear and greed, those three sort of major psychological traits that we see reflected in, uh, in financial markets time and time again. Also, the fact that, hey, as humans, we hate uncertainty okay we hate uncertainty and and if anything we will do anything we can to avoid it so when we experience uncertainty in life and in markets it is often that we will see initially adverse reactions and so i'm sure you know you will have seen it yourself when you're looking at markets if there is you know an you know an uncertain event okay and we've seen Plenty of those, okay, in the last month alone, based on some of the events that have been occurring in the Middle East, that induces uncertainty into our lives, and that uncertainty is displayed and manifests itself in financial markets, and we can see adverse reactions. And uh, you know, you only have to look back at the uh, the charts over just even over the last month to have uh, noticed and seen that. And when, and when we switch across to the live markets, we'll take a little bit of a we will take a little bit of a look at that. So. What we want to do is to be able to sort of work with that, understand that, okay, and, and see how that will impact our own understanding and our own analysis of markets, and also how it will impact the way we choose to engage with financial markets in our own trading decisions. So, of course, as I said, we've seen lots of volatility in the last few years, lots of uncertain events that have occurred. but you know, ultimately, we're traders, okay? And so you want to look at, well, how do we turn these events from threats into an opportunity? That's ultimately what we're looking to try and do. Firstly, we've got to recognize that these events occur all the time. It is part of the standard circle of life. Um, so, you know, we should expect 
things like nation's currencies to deteriorate or sell off. Okay, we've seen events of that even in just in the last 24 hours. We will also see moves towards safe haven currencies when you know uh, volatility is at its highest. We will also see elements, things like capital flows towards bonds. One of my own kind of little personal sayings is, is that, you know, capital is, is a coward. OK, it will run and hide in the safest place at the first sign of trouble. And normally the safest place most people will say is in bonds and has been mostly U.S. Treasuries, rightly or wrongly. That's where it tends to go. And understanding those flows can help us enormously. We will see elements like nations equities, they will likely fall if there is disruption to the stock market. Maybe that disruption is a cyber attack. Maybe that disruption is a, is a physical attack. Maybe that disruption is because of uncertainty, because of relationships with neighbors. We'll also see things like nations commodities, okay, may rise in terms of both their usage and their price. And there are particular uh, indications and elements of that when it occurs. And also, you know, we see that generally commodities will rise in general, especially during, let's say, intense periods of uncertainty. So it's not unusual when we see, for example, uh, instances where there might well be might well be conflict. OK, conflict is either threatened or conflict is occurring. Well, that can have an impact on things like the oil price in May. And certainly if there's tension in the Middle East, that can have an impact on rising Middle East because invariably it's all about supply and demand. And if if the uh, supply is uh, is likely to be damaged, well, that will have an impact upon, you know, the uh, sort of demand. Uh, and of course, demand rises generally. So do prices. So all of these events are happening. It's part of just the cycle of life, cycle of the economy, cycle of financial markets. And so we need to start to understand how can we analyze this all right how can we analyze how can we understand this uh, you know and, and what can we do to turn it from a, a threat into an opportunity and so today we're just gonna have a little sort of you know a basic element talking about let's use sentiment right let's use sentiment as a very simple way to to get an understanding of of what is the kind of the the well you know the, the level of sentiment and confidence within financial markets at that moment based upon all of the events that are going on in the world. So um, as you can probably see there and read on the chart, uh, read on the slides there, apologies, is that, um, you know, people might sort of start to think sentiment analysis might be a little bit, might be a little bit esoteric or it might be a little bit intimidating, but, but really uh, sentiment is just another word for confidence. That's, you know, that's the kind of simplest way to understand it. And you will find lots of traders will engage in sentiment analysis it, because it's really about how traders feel about what might be a market, what might be an individual stock, might be a country, it might be a, about the actual political um, party or government running that. And traders will use that sentiment analysis to define a market as whether it be bullish, okay, whether they're looking to rise, or particular, maybe it's bearish and stuff, and so invariably looking to fall. And by doing that sentiment analysis, it helps define the traders' appetite to risk um, and this is something that perhaps doesn't get talked about a great deal what i always say is that um uh, all of us okay all of us as traders we all sit on a spectrum with our uh with regards to our appetite to risk some people would sit at one end who are very very uh very uh, comfortable with risk very accepting of risk and then at the other end of the spectrum, there will be people who are, um, you know, very, uh, you know, not so comfortable with risk, very, you know, almost avoiding of risk. And we all sit on that spectrum. And it is, a, it's a crucially important thing as a trader to know where you sit on it, okay, to where you understand, you know, where your own risk appetite is. Because once you know your risk appetite, you will also be able to overlay that onto, let's say, what we're going to look talk about here is, overall market sentiment you know being able to recognize when they are in alignment that might be an opportunity for you to 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 trade uh, and maybe trade it more aggressively than normal alternatively it also might be a case of that you know it might be a uh, an opportunity for you to to basically avoid avoid a particular market if the, the volatility is is too high for your own particular risk appetite and you know the best way when people say well actually how can i learn my risk appetite paul and um, the best way i generally find is to 
to trade markets, make sure you keep good records, make sure you uh, review those records, make sure you you um, identify, okay, what were your sentiment and feelings about that trade, okay, where, where were you feeling confident, where were you feeling anxious, why, what was it, okay, and, and use that as a feedback loop to gain an understanding of your own appetite towards risk, and, and that, I assure you, will help you a great deal as uh, as a trader. However, what we want to focus on in the terms of a sentiment analysis is that at this stage of your trading journey, what I would be suggesting is that we just want a basic, simple sentiment analysis of markets that allows us to start the day with a little bit of a with a little bit of a bias. And really, we're looking at is the market in a risk on environment or is the market in a risk off environment? OK, keep it nice and simple. I find an awful lot of traders and I have been guilty of it myself in the past. Sometimes we overcomplicate things, okay? Sometimes we think, you know, it can't be this easy. We need to overcomplicate it. We need to add layers and layers of complexity to it. And I'm here to tell you actually that that generally usually doesn't help actually as a as a you know private trader operating in markets. You want to keep things nice and simple. And so having a basically an understanding of you know row row in terms of whether a market is risk on or risk off is a is a great starting point. As you develop in your levels and skills, you might want to add to that and want to look into deeper. But as a starting point, understanding whether it's row row is is a hugely important. You know, and that, as it says, that risk sentiment, it can change, right, through things like corporate earnings, which is what we'll see this week, okay, from some of those, well, lots of American companies, but also uh, some of the big tech companies. You've got macro data, central bank action, and geopolitical events. So the, all of these elements, they can colour and change the risk sentiment. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll look at, well, okay, uh, these things are happening. What do I need to look out for to give me an idea of whether the market is in a risk on mood or whether it's in a risk off mood? And so to be able to understand that, you know, Roro, I would view it as it's just about how price changes are driven by changes in traders and investors risk tolerance. That's what we're at. That's what we're looking to uh, to understand. Excuse me. That's what we're looking to to uh, to understand. Simon says, "Are market internals also important for establishing row? They can be, uh, they can be helpful, Simon. They, you know, they can be enormously helpful. Um, but I would suggest to begin with, okay, um, you know, just keep it, keep it simple. As as you delve deeper, as you go deeper in your trading journey, certainly look at uh, particular market internals might well help you. But um, today, we're just going to have a very nice top level view that you can take away and start to uh, to utilize. And so." If you're trying to understand how markets will uh, react, well, as it says there, when risk is perceived as low, then investors tend to engage with higher risk investments as they search for return. They're always looking for yield. And on the flip side, when risk is perceived as high, then investors tend to seek safety in low risk investments. So that would pretty much seem kind of, you know, that would seem kind of rational, but what you'll see is that sometimes people's decisions, people's behaviours in markets is is not rational. Okay, we are all human beings, but as a general rule, when risk is low, traders and investors will tend to aim for higher risk trades and investments. When risk is high, investors tend to seek safety. Okay, and so if we can identify that where where those flow of capital is going, that can give us a great understanding of whether we're in a risk on or a risk off environment. So here's a way to uh, here's a way to understand it. Okay, here's one to to uh, to sort of look at that. So on the left hand side is when the market risk on. Okay, in risk on situation, traders have a higher risk appetite, and they will bid up prices of assets in the markets, mainly because greed is driving the market. Traders and investors they are looking for return. They're looking for yield. So. Hence, we tend to see rises in risk on instruments. So in currencies, that's when we see Aussie, Kiwi, Canadian dollar, sterling. When we're seeing all of them rise together, that is giving us a good indication that its risk is on. In terms of commodities, we'll see things like oil and copper. They will be rising, okay, because people are expecting greater demand for them, because people are happy, the economy is doing well, the economic numbers are good. So they expect demand for commodities, and so we see those kind of things move. 
We also tend to see, you know, the uh, American indices. They tend to sort of, you know, um, um, march the beat of the same drum, namely when we're in a risk on environment, you are likely to see the S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the Russell, they will generally uh, rise as well. So when we're starting to see that, when you start to see that across FX indices, commodities, that is a good indication that, you know, for whatever reason, the market is in a risk on environment. It's sentiment, you know, it's it's feeling confident. And basically traders and investors are, they are looking for, you know, higher returns. Okay. They're looking for better yields in, 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 a, in a broad range of instruments. So that is risk on. Okay. And just take a moment to think you might have already seen that, you know, in your trading career days when you saw kind of, uh, you know, markets move in such a, in such a way. On the flip side, okay, on the flip side is about is the market risk off? So in risk off situations, traders become more risk averse. They tend to sell assets, sending their prices lower. A lot of that is because fear stalks the market, right? Remember what I was saying earlier? Capital is a coward. It, it will run and hide in the safest place at the first hint of trouble. So hence why we see risk off instruments rise. So normally that's what we'd see is Japanese yen, Swiss franc, and the US dollar. Now part of that US dollar rise is because lots of people will look to buy things like US Treasury bonds, okay? That's what they'll be looking to because they see that as the safest of safe havens. But it also can be things like the US 30 year, it can be like the German bond or the UK gilts. And generally, we would also see gold and silver, gold in particular, rise when we are in a risk off environment. So when it's risk on, Aussie, Kiwi, Canadian dollar, sterling, oil, copper, US indices rising. When we're in risk off, Normally, we'll see yen, Swiss franc, dollar rising, US 10-year and 30-year treasuries, German bonds, UK gilts, gold, and also an element of silver rising as well. So as part of your analysis at the start of a day, you can very quickly start to get a handle on whether we're in a risk on or a risk off environment, because that may well have a huge impact on how you position yourself for your trading session ahead. So as I said, just being able to, to, to get an understanding of this, you know, top level understanding of, of sentiment can help you enormously in the way you look to sort of, you know, um, um, position yourself for the, uh, for the trading session ahead. One of the other little tools that um, I utilize myself, okay, in terms of my center analysis is uh, is a, uh, certainly in the Forex world is, is a thing called, uh, uh, it's a website called Finviz. And once again, it helps me take a very, very quick snapshot of the uh, FX market. And most of the time, it will allow me to understand, are we in a risk on or are we a risk off environment? So um, I just took a, uh, a snapshot today just before we came on. Today is a bit of an interesting day because actually what we had was overnight, Bosch, we had um, a Japanese intervention. And so uh, they bought the Japanese yen. Uh, and by doing that, they bought Japanese yen while selling US dollar. So invariably, the US dollar today was weak against everything. OK, but normally, Normally, they would see if I was seeing Kiwi dollar, Aussie, sterling, euro, et cetera, if they were all rising, okay, and things like maybe uh, yen and Swiss franc, excuse my joy, if things like yen and Swiss franc are dropping, well, then that would give me an indication that we were in a risk on okay environment to the start of the trading session and vice versa, okay, if I saw that the yen and the Swiss franc was rising against the US dollar at the start of the session, that would give me an indication that we are in a risk off environment. And so, as I said, just being able to get a quick grasp of understanding what, whether in risk on or risk off, that can help enormously in positioning yourself for the, uh, for the trading session ahead. So, um, it would be interesting to know, you know, from what you've just seen or heard there, how many of you here joining us today actually do something like that already? How 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 many of you actually do, you know, almost like a almost like a you know a kind of a checklist or a systematic way of going through and analyzing whether a market is in a risk on or a risk off environment to begin with? How many of you do it? Maybe you know, maybe you, I you know, maybe you didn't know, maybe you didn't understand, uh, and always, you know, a, a good question to ask is. 
having heard this, do you think this is something that you could build in to part of your of your trading routine to to sort of help you make better um, better decisions to basically to be flowing with markets rather than fighting it? Because once you've identified, okay. You know when it is clear and and i will admit there are some days it isn't clear okay there is some days it isn't clear because markets might be transitioning markets might be chop okay before or after big news but when it is clear and and you will see with experience it becomes there are days when it becomes abundantly clear well then this is an opportunity for you to switch across to your platform this is an opportunity for you to even like set up a profile on your active trades trading platforms you can have a row row profile and then look for correlated trade setups. Okay, that might be a way to to basically to to help you. So um, Eric says, no, nope, haven't done it, but I will. That's 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 the spirit, Eric. And uh, Max says, yeah, new to me, very useful. Yeah, and it's hopefully you know this is something simple that just helps you get a grasp and an understanding of the market in front of you called the, the the sentiment of the market in front of you and can be enormously helpful and i think once you learn this and you practice doing it every day very quickly you'll get an idea okay of how to to, to build this into your trading and you'll very quickly get a sense of where you should be leaning in terms of your bias for your trading ahead but there you go set yourself up a row row profile okay and uh, uh so that you're in a position to very quickly take a snapshot but also Look for any correlated trade setups. But what does that mean? Well, here we go. You know, if markets are, are risk off, well, very often you'll see gold going up, Swiss franc and Japanese yen going up, oil going down, Aussie, Kiwi, Sterling going down. Okay. When we're risk on, okay, when everyone's excited and markets are being driven by greed, gold goes down, Swiss and uh, Japanese yen go down, oil goes up. Aussie, Kiwi, Sterling go up as well. So those are just very simple, okay? Very simple that just uh, as a way, and I mean, just to be able to look at a profile and understand, bang, this is what I'm looking for. This is, you know, the market today is either very, very clearly risk on or very, very clearly risk off. As I said, not every day will be that clear because markets are always transitioning, but when it is clear, that will help you enormously, okay? Because as I always say, you don't want to fight the market. I mean, you are very welcome to fight the market, but the likelihood is it'll be you who'll who'll lose out. What we really want to do is, you know, I always say to traders, th think of yourself like a surfer, okay? Think of yourself like a surfer. Good surfers, they want to try and surf the best waves. That's what they're looking to do, okay? That's what they want to try and do. They don't want to fight the waves because fighting the waves never really works well, does it? You're a surfer. You want to surf the best waves, all right? And this is helping you identify where the possible best waves are, okay, in terms of aligning yourself with what the market wants. And that in itself is a uh, is a is a good way to uh, is a good way to operate. So um, V says, haven't seen Vimbers before. Would you say green is risk on, red risk off, or have I mixed it up? Um, what you're just looking for, B, is just to see how the, uh, the in particular in the FX page, how they are traded against the US dollar. It's basically all relative to the US dollar. So as I said, if you see Aussie, Sterling, Kiwi rising and Swiss and Yen dropping, well, you know, we are uh, in one environment. And if on the flip side, if you're seeing Swiss and Japanese Yen going down, Aussie, Kiwi, and Sterling going up. That will show you very quickly that you're in a risk on environment. So hopefully that um, hopefully that helps. So uh, Simon says, out of the major FX pairs from experience, which currency is most prone to sentiment? Um, that's a good question. So um, not what we're looking for is in terms of, because in FX you're trading pairs, okay? So um, in the old days, it used to be said that kind of euro yen would be very much a proxy for overall market sentiment. Um, so basically, you know, when euro would rise and yen would fall, that would be risk on and vice versa. If I was looking, if I had to call it on one today, I'd probably say something like Aussie yen would be the uh, would be um, one particular one. OK, but then that has been a little bit um uh, how what's the right word that has been perhaps maybe a little bit manipulated by the uh, instances of what's going on in the japanese yen but you know what we do find is the kind of like you know aussie yen okay is a is a not a bad not a bad proxy so 
Uh, well done. Also, says I'm going to create a separate row row watch list. Yeah, absolutely, you should do. It's you know it can be it can be enormously helpful. Just a simple way, just to take a uh, to take a, uh, a shot. Or it says I find bonds, ten year treasury yields go down in the market like the DAX is going up. Yep, that that's also and um, that's also very true. Okay, that's you know that's a, you know there in itself is an understanding of when people are risk on, they will put money into their uh, uh, put money into you know stocks and, and indexes and when risk is off people will be putting money into into bonds generally and stuff so um that's great so super if you keep all the questions coming that's great and i'm great that you're finding this uh, useful and helpful to you with your uh, with your trading <clears throat> so so yeah so as a simple trading plan you know it could just be a very simple trading plan well you know ideally i'm looking to trade in the direction of the risk environment and so maybe you're a swing trader maybe you're an intraday trader so you know have the daily the four hours 60 and the 15 minute charts and what you're really doing is looking for correlations that's what you're looking for if it is very clear what the risk environment is well then as i said earlier be a surfer don't fight it find a way to to, to ride it find a way to surf that wave that's what we're looking to do and what this means is that a lot of the very simple price action setups which i've shared with you here on our session so you know price actions candlesticks the relationship to the 50 period moving average they are all still very very valid they're all valid setups but when you have a let's say the kind of the top layer of understanding the risk sentiment well then you know you've you've got a correlation in terms of your own way of operating okay you're you're not fighting the market you're trading with what the market wants you know you're and more likely to sort of you know uh, engage with the flow of the market uh, and that invariably is, is tends to be a a better way to operate if you're uh, if you're looking to 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 put yourself in a position to take good asymmetric reward to risk and um, trades so this is as i said how you can understand that sentiment and then start to just turn it into a simple trading plan that will help you want what the market wants okay which might sound um maybe too simplistic but i assure you that you know one of the best ways you can trade markets is to want what the market wants don't fight the market want what the market wants and if them if it's very clear that the market is in a risk on environment and certain asset classes are rising well don't fight that surf that and on the flip side if the markets are bearish and if the market is a really risk off okay and certain instruments are moving lower well once again don't fight that look to look to flow with that look to to surf those waves before we switch over to the live charts have a little look at the markets from today uh, just in conclusion Money Market Max is here to support you in 2024, okay? So remember, every Monday, 2 o'clock London time, where we'll cover the news, education, active trade tools, and also a look at the markets. Um, I've said this from day one of this year. I think it's going to be a very interesting year in markets. Uh, and so I hope that you will join us to enjoy the journey every Monday at uh, 2 o'clock because there's uh, an awful lot uh, we can share with you and, and hopefully help support you in what, as I said, is going to be you know an eventful year. Uh, and in particular, you know, I think it's fair to say that we've all experienced a lot of uncertainty in the last few years that has shown itself up in financial markets. And, you know, periods of volatility and uncertainty, they, they're not new. They are always occurring in markets and in life. All right. Uh, but they also they have an impact on FX markets, equities markets, commodities, fixed income markets. And you can help keep on top of events by studying sentiment analysis, by creating a row row profile to help you trade the correct products in line with the greatest sentiment. As I said, sometimes it'll be very, very clear whether the market is in risk on or risk off. And that's a great thing to know. It's a great thing to be able to recognize and it's a great thing to be able to flow with. But there will still be times that, you know, that it that it is not it, you know, it is not terribly clear. If it's not terribly clear, well, then, you know, I normally sort of work on the premise of it being risk off until I'm told or shown otherwise. OK, but as I said, look for look to keep it nice and uh, look to keep it nice and simple. So Charles says, I normally look bonds two years, 10 years, SP and NAS and Dow to do my analysis. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a good starting point. OK, that's there's nothing wrong in that as a good starting point. OK, uh, and especially if you are predominantly let's say a trader in equities or indices etc 
But equally, you know, it's also quite simple to add in some of those commodities, some of those FX pairs to get you a quick uh, understanding of of what is uh, of what's going on. So you're in a position to understand what, if any, sentiment is very clearly in charge of that um, market. So um, before we switch to the live markets, just a reminder of our next session. So um, just a reminder, we're, we're not here next Monday. It's a it's a bank holiday in the uh, in the United Kingdom, but we will be back the Monday after, um, which is the thirteenth of May, two o'clock London time. And the education bit will be on how to trade a false breakout. Um, a very simple but very popular, well popular to me. Um, uh, trading setup. Okay, so I'll be sharing that. So if you're not registered, you can do so on the website or take a quick screenshot of that QR code and it'll take you through to where you're able to register. And I hope you'll join us to, to be able to talk about um, false breakouts. So we're going to switch across to the live charts now and have a little look at what's uh, what's been going on. Um, as always, if you've got any questions about active trades themselves, you can get in touch with your account representative and give them a, a call on 0207 6500 567. Or if you've got questions or comments or feedback or even topics you'd like to see me talk about, um, then you can email the English desk at activetrades.com and they will be uh, very happy to, to help guide you. So. There we go. Hopefully, um, you can see my. Uh, hopefully, you can see the uh, charts, and uh, you know, I've got one of my row row profiles up here. Let's get the old drawing tool up here. One of my row row profiles here. So, you know, um, I have on it. I have the uh, the kind of the dollar index, um, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, gold, oil, Bitcoin, the VIX and also Aussie dollar and also um, Aussie yen in there as well. So um, you can have, you know, little bits of difference, a little bit of variance on that, but um, that's what I tend to, um, that's what I'll tend to um, work with just to help give me an idea, okay, of if there's real clarity in terms of the, uh, in terms of the, uh, of the sentiment. Now, um, today what we've had is you know kind of today is is a little bit um is you know is a little bit uh, what's the right word um we've been overwhelmed by the operations of the japanese yen overnight so the picture is not as necessarily as uh, as clear as as we would normally particularly like some people will sort of kind of use the vix and stuff and see how you know as, as that as that goes down that's an indication of you know risk is on and as it goes up um, that's an indication of risk is off, and that's okay. But I find um, VIX is a little bit VIX is not the um, VIX is not the beast it used to be. Okay, in terms of that, but it is still it still plays a um, it still plays a particular uh, a particular part in that. Um, you know, when we are looking at uh, here, let me just uh, let's just clear this and have a little look at one of the elements here that we've been talking about. So, for example, um, oil. Bang! You know what we have been seeing is oil was kind of rallying up strongly this year a, an indication that um, that basically you know you know there was demand going on there it actually started to accelerate if i just go into the daily chart here this where we started to accelerate here a lot of that was seen as that started to occur during the uh, events in the middle east between iran and israel and of course that had an impact and of course that you know had an impact on stock markets but also an impact on oil and then actually what we've seen here is, you know, since since the sort of, let's say, the tit for tat um, strikes, retaliation strikes between each other, since that has so far been the kind of end of it, what we have seen is the, you know, the kind of the um, uh, the volatility has, has kind of reduced. And with that, so has the so has the price of oil slipped back as well. OK, still in a in a bullish trend. But, it, you know, the the um, let's say the kind of the excited euphoria and euphoria may not necessarily be the right word. But once we see start to see price going parabolic, start to see price pulling away from the major moving averages, that's normally an indication in itself that that we're in a little bit in this particular case there's a kind of a, a risk off sentiment uh, and then. As that has not followed through, so we have seen the oil price kind of drop away. Also, so um, you know, all of these things can actually play a part in helping you, as I say, um, draw a particular, draw a bit of an understanding of what what we're looking at and what we're seeing in the uh, uh, in the in the particular markets. As I said, um, dollar against the Japanese yen. Well, you know, that has been just invariably a, a, an indication there, and you can probably see the price action there. That's what we've been dealing with. A lot of that is, that is, you know, although the 
neither the uh, Bank of Japan or the Ministry of Finance have come out and confirmed that there was uh, intervention um, last night. Um, it's probably, um, I'm not entirely sure who else who else is actually doing that if it's not the, the Bank of Japan themselves. But anyway, there was, you know, there was major moves now. And so that has effectively sort of just that, you know, that that in itself basically, um, let's say, skews the, the view for this particular day. But invariably, because that happens, because that can, people are going to be in a, in a little bit of a risk off environment, when they see such huge volatility, most, of course, naturally, their position is to, to basically to step back until until it works its way out, until it basically people get a little bit of a better understanding of what the, uh, you know, of what is, um, of what is particularly, um, what's particularly going on. And even, as I was saying earlier, even Aussie Yen, which um, we can see really from uh, had been in a kind of you know in a in a good uptrend that's showing that basically you know um, uh, you know the uh, mostly a bit of a risk on mentality. So if as Aussies rising and yen was weakening, that you know that's what we've kind of seen as kind of just confirmed it there. But then as I said, the kind of the manoeuvring in the yen over the last day or two is kind of putting a uh, it's sort of um, put, taking the wind out of the air, the sails on that. But um, we, we'll look at that in a little bit moment as well. We'll come back to that because why also, as always, is I want to have a little look at the uh, US indices and you know how they are impacted, um, and also you know as we sort of how we've opened for uh, for today. So I'm just going to look here. Just bear with me one moment. What we're going to do is yeah, boom. Just okay. Just I'm just going to put these on the weekly charts here maybe make it just a little bit understanding so um uh you know normally i have this for my intraday which we'll talk about but i've got um dow here nasdaq russell s p 500 okay the four major american indexes um and and really what we had was um uh if we look at the russell here sort of in kind of september august september early october we were in a quite a, a downturn on the russell as we were as we were on the uh, the nasdaq and also as we were on the other indices here we go push as we were on the other indices we were the same in the the dow also the sp 500 there was a risk off mentality and then we had uh, an event here kind of around about the uh, 22nd of october hopefully you can see that there okay the price action across all of those major american indexes was huge buying okay huge buying uh, occurred and what we saw was basically we saw basically a, you know, a risk on uptrend there for a couple of months didn't we just really just effectively as you can see just basically prices pumping that they're higher that is up until a few weeks ago we can see here where price started to sort of roll over there and a lot of that was to do with the you know the um, instance between iran and israel that basically brought in uncertainty what we saw was oil rallied up but then also the stock market started to started to, to fall a little bit. And that also was a reflection of the Treasury bonds, as we saw uh, uh, data coming out of America sort of suggesting that the kind of the uh, the search for early interest rates was, was getting pushed back further and further. And so we basically kind of you can see for the, the last few weeks, those price moved off and we were definitely in that kind of risk off environment there. However, it, what we've seen in the last week here has been the case of the some of the US tech earnings, which we'll see more of this week, they have been strong. All right. They have been um, strong and they have effectively broken those rules. And also the fact that for the moment, there doesn't seem to be any overt, overt um, uh, action between Iran and Israel at the moment. That is effectively allowing markets to to just basically have a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a relief rally. That, that's how I would describe that and stuff. So, as I was saying, you know, you can add in those U.S. indices. Okay, you know, when they're when they're rising strong, we're in risk on. When they're falling strong, falling heavily, we are risk off. Align that with you know how we see gold operating. Gold will rise. Okay, you know when uh, when we're in risk off environments, and generally we'll tend to drift away and we're risk on. Oil, all right. Oil quite often will do the um, uh, do the can can do the uh, the opposite in terms of it will rise, okay, when risk is on, and basically uh, it'll uh, uh, it'll fall when risk is off because people look at it in terms of the demand or the lack of it. So all of these pieces together, putting them together, gives you an idea to to give you an idea of how to describe and understand whether we're in a risk on or a risk off um, environment. So we'll come back to that in a moment. But of course, as always, I want to just see how we're opening for the uh, US session. This 
week as always um remember what i normally say is that you know for hit for us here in the uk and for um you know 9 30 us eastern time is about 2 30 time so hence why you're starting to see these big candles here this is 30 minute charts okay um i in the same way i like to see correlation in my risk i also kind of like to see correlation in my um in my indices so um you can probably see the nasdaq at the open we'll look at it in a bit more has fallen as has s p um actually russell initially started opening up as did um the the dow so you know, when they're open in different ways that you know that always kind of keeps me a little bit um on my toes excuse me but let's have a little look at what what it's telling us if we go down the uh, the timelines and i just i'm always just looking at particular levels just want to see how does the how will the market operate or react to the kind of the, the highs and lows of the day so far i'm always interested that we can see here on the dow you know we've opened and we've just pumped up there to the what was the high of the day from the early session five minute chart bumped up there and then bosh oops excuse me what we saw was yeah you know we opened we pumped up to the to the high of the day uh, and we reversed that and we reversed and fell away from there uh, and now i'm just looking at it to see how hang on we go up to the five minute chart yeah i think you know we're kind of we've had 20 minutes of pivoting around um the kind of friday's high there okay that's what we're looking around there so not really you know i would say there's not really the kind of clarity i'd be wanting there at the moment so maybe you might look at that as a bit of a double top but i would just really see that's kind of pivoting around there at the moment i would want to see it break these break these levels if i was being aggressive on the intraday basis if i look at nasdaq um once again just drawing in you know where were the highs of the day so far? High was to the swing. I was just in front of the open. If we go down to the five minute chart, you know, we've opened, we've pushed up, and we've come all the way straight down, haven't we? That's it. That's it. Yeah. You know, basically open, pushed up to the high of the day, cleared that out, and then reversed it then. And that is that's been significant drops there, hasn't it? That's been kind of a, you know, I would be I would be bearish there. What's from 17,950 to 17,830. So over a hundred. Over 100, nearly 120 handles from the high to the low in the in what's that in the first 24 minutes? Okay, that's that's a pretty um, yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty move. That you know that's a stunning move. So I would be of course interested here. Yeah, is that we're down here at the lows? I'll be looking to see is, does this put in a, a lower bottom, the, a double bottom for us? Okay, does it perform a double bottom? In which case, I'll be looking for it to ride it back up to the previous day, previous week's high. That's what I'll be looking at there. Okay, and once the um, once the three o'clock moments on, I'll be looking does the uh, what's the S and P doing for us? S and P did the same, pumped up to the uh, to the high of the day. Okay, pumped up to the high of the day, and then came straight back down there. Just cleared that out. That's the one minute chart. Put in a nice double top there with a bearish key reversal, one minute, and then away. And now, yeah, we're down to here like a double bottom there. Let's just see. I'm just gonna yeah. So it's kind of interesting that the what I'm what I look at, as I said, I always say that you know, I like to see correlation. So I can see that the you know there's a possible double bottom there, whereas actually it's a double top on the Dow there. Okay, that's what I'll be looking at. That um, as I said, I normally like to see good, good, clean, simple correlation. That's what I, that's what I'm aiming for. Um, but when it isn't there, I generally tend to sort of leave it. And that's uh, you know, you've heard me say on a Monday anyway. Monday, the first half an hour can be pretty scrappy. Okay, be pretty scrappy, especially if they are responding to an event like what we saw in the Japanese yen last night. Okay, there will be you know a lot of people sort of just having to uh, effectively. Um, trim their positions okay reallocate uh, and so you know it's no surprise that the first 20 to 30 minutes can be a bit scrappy uh, especially on a monday so uh, i'm normally very happy to just watch for the first half an hour and then and then as we get into the what would be the 10 o'clock eastern time 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock eastern time that can be a, a a useful time and then actually even the 11 o'clock eastern time to midday eastern time that sometimes has a as a kind of a yeah, that can have a nice move and then i find that after that we go into the american lunch and it gets a little bit um, it gets a little bit quieter there so um let's just have a look let me just clear these paint drawings for us so yeah so you know it looks like you know it looks like we're, we're kind of so far I was pointing in a double bottom and a double top there. Okay, let's just see what the Russell is doing. I'll bring that Russell down as well. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, and the Russell is just Russell is Russell. Russell's not doing. Russell's doing its own thing. Opens up, 
flat powers his way up, has a big bearish key reversal, bearish engulfing candle. And I talked about key reversals about a month ago. If you haven't, they're on the webinar archive. Be sure to go and check them out and then just watch how that's dropping. I suppose maybe you might look at that and say, is that a bit of a, a bit of a double bottom there opening as well? So yeah, so the Dow seems to want to do its own thing. The Dow wants to do its own thing, whereas these guys, there is a little bit, see how there's a little bit of correlation between them. And as I said, ideally, I'd like to see, um, I'd like to see all of them, but that might, that might not happen till the, that might not happen till the next hour. So uh, in, or rather getting into the next hour uh, and we'll look at, uh, we'll look at that. Let me just have a quick look at um, what gold is doing. Oops, me, let's get rid of my drawings. Du, du, du. So, um, you know, we've been in terms of Roro, we've been in an interesting place because gold has been on a tear, okay, an absolute tear, right, for, for most of the last couple of uh, months. Uh, and I was looking at here whether we'd put in a kind of a double top here and sort of rolling over from it. But as you can see for yourself, it's, we've actually mostly, we mostly had a nice long here at the end of last week. But actually, for most of last week's thought, we've been in a kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a range on gold. And I think maybe, as I think I said in my own market update, um, you know, you've got the 50 period moving average here. OK, you've got providing dynamic resistance. You've got the 20 providing dynamic support prices coiling up before it makes a move. Whether it will make a move before the FOMC on Wednesday, we shall have to wait and see. But that's that's the way I look at it at the moment. The market is um, the market's waiting for uh, for its next big bit of news to sort of give it a uh, give it a particular uh, um, to give it a particular move. Uh, so Simon says there is a, there's a three bar reversal, but no key reversal, um, which is different. Yes, they are different. Um, what you'll normally find is that um, actually, you know, just a couple of weeks later, you'll find it. So I will I will speak to the team and uh, have them look to put that up for you, Simon. But um, yeah, it should be up there with the uh, with the debrief one. Um, you know, and I'd say it's great that you found it so uh, so particularly useful. Okay, so um, yeah, I would just be I would just be watching this because because Dow is falling whilst these guys are trying to climb and stuff so um, i would just be watching to see if it, you know it, it, you know who's winning out of that you know who's actually basically uh, you know do they do they basically end up sort of just all doing the same because that's actually what i really like to to see rather than trying to fight markets remember what i said earlier we want to be surfing waves rather than that, surfing waves rather than fighting Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, as I always say, you know, time flies when you're uh, when you're having fun. Um, I hope that you have found that um, session useful. I hope that's given you some some really good uh, um, food for thought in terms of how you can uh, build sentiment and analysis into your trading to help give you an understanding of whether we're in a risk on or a risk off environment, because that will allow you to align yourself with the uh, with the with the right market direction at the start of your trading sessions. Um, as always, I you know I wish you the uh, the very best of success in your own trading endeavors, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a, a fabulous trading week. Remember, we're not here next week, but we are back in two weeks time to talk about uh, fault breakouts. And I, I hope that you will uh, join us there for uh, for that. So. Max says, thanks so much, Paul. Hugely helpful as always. You're very welcome. Thanks as always. Extremely useful. Yep. That's great, Simon. Thank you for a good webinar. You're very welcome, Eric. Thanks very much for joining us, everybody. Have a great trading week um, and I will speak to you soon. Cheers.